There's a white dot on the screen. I wonder what that was. Alright, I'm gonna make it nice and clean. Alright, shiny. So. 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 Oh, I didn't do so in my episode. You didn't? Oh. Missed that. So I catch phrase. I'm rusty. Yeah. Rusty. All right. Look at this. Look at that. Look Recognize at that? that? That's an import. <laughs> it's an import. But MJS, look at you. All right. I know. Well, I know every time I do this and I don't put MJS, Matthias will just appear behind me. Um, next time I'm at the mirror, well, no, Andrea will me. appear and tell you that MJS is wrong. <sighs> I, look, I'm not getting into <laughs> MJS versus JS. That's not the point of this. Because what I actually want to talk about is look all at all these imports. Ah, oh, lo- oh, many imports. Many. No, that, that's not real. Of different things. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, if you've used a build script before, you've probably done something like this. Like, uh, we we yeah. definitely have, right? You've got yeah. all of this stuff. Yeah. But I show these ones. Uh, specifically because all of these have web standards behind them in either like yes. progress or, or or whatever yes um the data one uh, this this like json one is particularly interesting because this went into the html spec it actually got merged and then bugs got created for all the browsers to implement mm-hmm. and then they all got closed and it got reverted ooh and that's what i want to talk about that's interesting. Yeah. So wait, wait. Let's, let's just quickly for the people who don't know, because I actually don't know some of this. So, WebAssembly is working on making them importable, and then WASM would just be an instance of a WebAssembly module. I assume so. That's uh, the one I know the least about. CSS. That's the the very controversially named CSS, CSS modules, modules. Yeah. Which will give you a style sheet. Style sheet object, I think, or okay. something like that. It's 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 yeah. It's an it's an object that you would be able to put into a shadow DOM or the regular DOM, and then right. it will apply the styles. It won't be applying the styles by default. HTML will give you from this, I would assume, in a, a document. A document. Some of that's fragment. Very much up in the air. I think it will this just be the HTML a literal document. Modules. Proposal. Yes, and mm. there's all it's it's very much up in the air. But there's talk about if that HTML file has a script of type module and it exports things, then it will be named exports in there as well. Oh, it's kind of fancy. Interesting. Very much in progress. And JSON, I guess, would give you whatever JSON.parse would give you. Absolutely. All right. Cool. Yeah. Let's move yeah. on. So the idea is to enable something like this, where you know, oh, time zone data is something we've looked at recently. Is uh, you know, finding out which Time zone a particular country is in. That's something you don't want to be maintaining yourself. And very complicated. Go to example.com. Example.com, the best location for all time zone data. <laughs> Presumably, maybe. I don't know. Um, but when you import something from another website, like there's a lot of things you need to consider, like yeah. security wise. Yeah, um, and generally, like I the only time I personally ever use third party imports is for like prototyping and I import from Unpackage. Yeah, I've done stuff with like Flickr API before. Oh, that's true. Like, no, that's absolutely like, legit. Yeah. Once you work with APIs, that actually is pretty common to do stuff like this. And so, but once, you, once you're using an import like this, like if this fails to parse or if it fails to connect or if it fails a cause check or your DNS, entire, blah, blah, yeah. blah, yeah, your whole graph is gone. Like the entire so, module just will not run. Exactly. The static imports have to succeed, right? Yes, all static imports have to work before the whole JavaScript file will work. So, yeah, th- that that'd be a problem. Um, slightly worse would be if the server hangs, it just takes forever. Yeah, because then the user's just looking at a spinner. Uh, like <laughs> at best, at best, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would be a browser level spinner if this oh, is a yeah. script tag in your document. That's true. Um, so yeah, that that would be a shame. So, I would always say if you're going to do this, yeah, you, you would actually want to use dynamic import. Yeah, yeah, because then you can handle errors yourself and all of that sort of stuff. Or you know. Provide a timeout. Yeah. Something like that. Other things to consider is it could come back with valid JSON, but in a completely different structure to what you're ready for. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. I guess if if they just you know update their API and be like, oh, we have this new format that's much better, and your code doesn't know about it. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> Off you go. Uh, you could validate uh, stuff you could do. Because um, at some point, you have to have some trust in the other service. Yeah. But and this is where all the problems started, is this piece of code you're putting more trust into example.com um, than it looks like. OK. So this is being treated as JSON, not because it ends in .json, but because it has this Right, content. because file extensions are pretty much meaningless on the web. Yes. Apparently, there is, um, I think, in the object tag, uh, we it pays it like 
Do you remember the object tag? Yes. That's for, for how doing to do flash embeds and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think there's code in that that relies on extensions. But other than that, yes, you're right. The, the web does not really do extensions at all. Um, but this means that the server is in charge of how this file will be processed. Yes. And if at some point they go evil, they could just now change will, that. Now you, that code will be executed instead of just JSON parsed. Yeah, that's and not good. It's and, and it could be a while before you realize what was happening, because it could still be returning data, valid data, but it's now maybe reading. looking into your DOM, finding out stuff about the user, yeah. reading all your storage, posting it somewhere else. They could do everything that JavaScript can do. Yeah, that's, that's no. Yes. And th yeah, so this is what happened, and everyone went, that's not great. <laughs> I mean, so, my this with this example specifically, my I, I thought about CSP. Like you could say that, you know, I'm gonna add a hash of whatever I expect to receive. But at that point, with time zone data, I could imagine that actually hash is not really that useful because that might become invalid the second a summertime happens or wintertime happens. So but yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, uh, there has been talk about trying to work around this with CSP in. It, yeah, so you, so you could lock down the content, but even if the content doesn't change, maybe the situations where the content can stay the same, the content type changes, and it, it is still valid. Like it's these, valid of both. Like you these know? images who are also a zip file if you just change them to .zip. It, exactly like that. And and that would be true for uh, CSS, for yeah. CSS especially, because CSS is so um, has so much error correction. It's yeah, very true. easy for it to then be valid in another language because you could just manipulate yeah. comments and stuff. Well, this is scary. It is. It is scary. Um, so this has been shelved. Essentially, this has been put but on ice. But only this. The other ones are still fine. Jason's on ice because Jason. Which so part of the problem here is the whole reason Jason was invented is because people were just including JavaScript to do the yeah. same thing, and it was like, well, this is bad that it can execute code. Uh, we don't want that. We yeah. just want the data. So yeah. Jason was invented to just provide the data. And like then like this comes along and makes it entirely redundant <laughs> because it can now provide the data or execute loads of script. So yeah, they were like, well, that's that's a problem. But so, isn't the same problem also true for like CSS? The same problem is true also for CSS. Yes, absolutely. So that one is also on ice. So right? shelve it all. It's all all not happening. Well, uh, we're unsure about HTML because it's unclear whether if you import an HTML module, if it can execute top level script or not. That's still up in the air. Because if it can, shelve it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's not having it. It's not getting a new superpower by changing from HTML to JavaScript. It can already execute JavaScript. Oh, that yeah, I guess. So that and Wasm, I'm not sure about because I I couldn't figure this out well, just by looking at the WebAssembly is different in the sense that it, it will be able to run code because WebAssembly yes. models can have a start function that runs on an instantiation automatically. Yes, but it doesn't have access to anything. But it, would it might it in the future or yeah it might in the future I'm not sure because the part of this ES6 model proposal is that not only can you import Wasm hmm. but Wasm can import other files and whatever those files export it now can call so it can import a JavaScript fun file which would then be executing and yes. access your DOM so th that might be fine then because it already has those superpowers yeah. it's it's not a problem. Um, so yeah we need to solve this problem somehow uh, and the problem we need to solve is that. It's the other server which decides how this yeah. should be processed, and that shouldn't be like if you're already expecting execution to happen, that's fine. Yes. But if the server can start, suddenly turn something that wasn't executable into something that gets executed, that's the part that's dangerous. Yes, because that's completely different from how the most of the web platform operates, like image tag. Yes, this, this is you as the developer saying, "I want this to be treated as an image." An image, and so if it's JavaScript, it doesn't run. Yeah. Uh, now there's some wiggle room, like even though this says .png, it could return JPEG, SVG. And content type is the only thing that matters. Um, actually, with images, we don't use content type. We it's just sniff the start. Oh, just file. sniff it. We might with SVG. I'm not sure. Might use content. Well, so the type thing there. is, SVGs can contain script tags, but I think in an image tag, they're ignored. They're ignored. Yes, there's there's loads of SVG stuff that doesn't work in an image tag. Uh, so script is one. Um, the other one is like anything that would fetch. Yeah, like thing. you so can't include an image from another. Can't URL. include an image. Can't include a style unless sheet unless it's like a data URL. But data URL is probably fine. Yeah, I think if it, if it's all in the same thing, then that's fine. Uh, you can still animate. Um, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, but otherwise, you're you're saying image, you get an image, or it yeah. fails. Um, so the chat is like, can we bring that? 
to this proposal. And mm -hmm. so this is all very much up in the air right now because uh, you know everyone had gone forward with these proposals and they went, uh oh, and <laughs> <laughs> so they've gone back to the start. But this is the sort of thing being talked about. It's like, do we get something in syntax? Uh, so it's like, you know, import this as JSON. Yeah, that kind of makes sense to me. You're back in control. Uh, and then there's this one, which links a little bit to uh, what we were talking about, import maps. Yeah, so I like this. This is taking the, the import scheme, uh, but then plus JSON. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and so I mean, the, why, it's, it now has two schemes, like the import scheme and JSON. I, I'm not ha too happy about the specific syntax, but I like that they're just putting it into the, like it's a yeah. special import because, yeah, I like that because this will then automatically, I guess, also carry over to dynamic import without changing the syntax of dynamic import. You would just still have, yeah, maybe. exactly. That's a good point, actually. I don't know how dynamic import would work with this as JSON New thing, option, whereas this would maybe. just work. Because it's not a oh, function, right? Parameter Which of would not be a syntax change for the language. And yes. maybe this would even carry over to fetch. Who knows? Interesting. That's a good point. Um, whereas, yeah, the, there is some precedent in the browser about this, because we have the uh, view source. Oh yeah, that's true. Scheme ish, where you'd have that, and then HTTPS, yeah. and then on, and it's saying interpret this resource in a different way. So there's there's some examples there. Is it actually standardized? Is it just like a? I, I think it's just something all browsers it's do. Like a convention that magically everyone is adhering to. Yeah, I okay. think so. I think so. Um, so this got me thinking about a bugbear I have with build scripts, and I yeah. think you shared the I same bugbear. We bear. talk about it, didn't we? Uh, have we talked about it on the show before? No, didn't we give a talk about it? Or am I oh, yeah, so we gave a whole talk about it, right? <laughs> yes, which we probably mentioned on the show as well. And it's it's something like like this. When I see this in a project, I look at it and it's like, I don't know what's going to happen there. Yeah. Like, what what is the something? Is it? I mean, now that's a web standard, an emerging one, kind of. But there's sometimes people import an image or a text file or something that is not even a real file, and you're like, what's happening here? Well, the web standard says something would be uh, one of these style sheet yeah. objects, whereas it, it's quite typical for, uh, yeah. for it to be like a, a CSS module, the other kind of CSS module, like the Webpack variety, where this would be a map of, of class names to minified yeah. class names. And then it would just insert the, it, it's going to do some stuff. But to find that out, you're going to have to go into the build config. You're going to have to look through it. And it's, it's, sometimes it's like, oh, extensions like this do this. Sometimes yep. it's like extensions like this, but in this directory, do this, and, and then later on, you will accept if the if it's an import with this extension, but in this folder, then a completely different rule matches. Like there's, it's it can get really really bonkers. Absolutely, um, and I yeah, I don't like that because I especially as um, especially if this was like a .dot JavaScript, like a .dot JS file, but in a particular directory, it's going to do something different, or for a particular file, it does something different. Because well, there's two problems there. One, it's not obvious, and two, if for some reason, that part of the build script stops working. It's going to import it as JavaScript. Like the yeah, fallback so the, so the is the build is not actually going to fail necessarily, but it might do something completely wrong when and, you actually run the code and take forever to figure yeah. out. Um, so I actually quite liked this Webpack syntax, or well, I like the capability the approach. Issue. Yeah, yep, yeah, because I see that and I go, "That's not normal." It, if this gets pushed to production like this, it will just fail because this is not a valid import per se. And failure is the right thing here because yeah. it's not being processed, so it should exactly. fail early. It shouldn't maybe work somehow. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and they even allow it to be chained. And there's like options here. So this is saying CSS loader, but I mean, it does get true. unwieldy. Yes, it does. But um, I, I I see that it's nice to be able to look at a JavaScript file, look at the import, and just from looking at the import, you can kind of deduce what the thing that is being imported actually will contain. Absolutely. And so we did a similar thing, didn't we? We did in, a similar thing. In Rollup, um, we would make sure it, everything had like a kind of weird scheme, yeah. and that's what would be picked up. Uh, and, and so yes, again, if this wasn't processed, it would fail early, because it would just be like, this is not a URL, and the whole thing would just break. Um, so I was, I was really fascinated to see like this yeah. sort of happen. Wait, wait, Maybe we, we were trends. Yeah, we were. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna link to our talk in the description because that's how this whole thing got started. Obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Um, so yeah, it, it's I think there's a real opportunity here, and, and I know uh, Parcel, uh, the other the bundler, other bundler, the other one that I've not mentioned yet. They're looking at at something like this. They've been yeah. looking at special extensions, query string, a special scheme, some way of doing this. And it's come at just the right time for them, this whole thing, yeah. where we might actually need something standard in the language yeah. to, to say. If the tools can piggyback off a standardized way of encoding these kind of options into the import string, that would be great. Exactly. So what started as a kind of security 
oversights that just put the brakes on a load of specifications might actually turn out to, to be something that brings together both build tools and web tools. That's great. But this whole thing got me thinking about build scripts, a book uh, that I have of build scripts, and I think you share it. Yeah. Um, shall I repeat that? Oh, we probably, did we trigger OK Google? Amazing. 